Hi, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Um, I just want to make a few points. Uh, mostly I want to talk about some really important uh, information that Margot um, has uh, provided on her um, broadcast last week. Uh, but first I just want to talk very briefly uh, about something here. Um, so last week I got sent a video from a YouTuber in Romania of all t places and he was talking about New Zealand and he referred to an article in The Guardian um, and it talked about hiking uh, the price of um, of tickets uh, to New Zealand and there's been absolutely nothing except just one article in a web-based publication um, called Newsroom. Uh, otherwise I haven't seen a single thing about this. So basically I mean New Zealand has been shut down uh, for a year we've had no uh, tourists coming in because of uh, COVID. Uh, we've had a total I think of 27 deaths um, that happened in a lockdown just, sh just short of a year ago um, and the cases keep sort of flaring up you know. Uh. So before all of this happened Tourism was our, uh, our second biggest uh, export earner and I think we had up to about a, a million tourists uh, come to this country every year. That's in a country of, of this short of uh, five million people. And then all of a sudden now we get this headline, uh, hiking the cost of getting to New Zealand is a good thing, says Air New Zealand advisor. The National Airlines Chief Environmental Advisor, uh, that's uh, uh, Porrit, uh, supports price hikes which would put some people off flying and curb thoughtless, heedless tourism. What is thoughtless, heedless tourism? I thought it was an industry that helped this country to uh, to survive um, uh, economically uh, but now we're wanting to put them off so they want they just want the rich tourists and of course the people uh, who can afford it can fly their uh, you know their private jets all around the, the world and that's not really a problem it's just thoughtless heedless tourism that's the plebs who want to come here the backpackers the people that make life interesting both for themselves and and and, and for us through the social interaction um yeah and all of this is in the name of uh defeating climate change well i just want to put that in perspective by talking about something else. So we get in the media um, a lot about the West reducing their uh, carbon footprint and cutting back on emissions and everything and uh, Greta Thunberg and everything waves her, her, wags her finger and says you're not doing enough. Uh, but she doesn't um, ever mention, or nobody ever mentions, the biggest elephant in the room, the biggest polluter on the planet, uh, is China. And our emissions are just nothing compared with China. And let's have a look at something else that hasn't been reported very widely. I just uh, saw a headline in Zero Hedge. Uh, they actually did a quite a good headline because they, they pinpointed it. 
China cuts growth outlook, increases military spending, and shrugged off climate change in the latest five-year plan. So, in the midst of this article, which is sort of along the lines of what's been in what I take to be the financial media or just underplayed, is just a couple of paragraphs Uh, and it says, additionally, much to the chagrin of the world's climate change evangelists, China, the world's largest polluter, confirmed little other than they had a plan to reach peak emissions by 2030 would be completed this year and not net zero emissions by 2050. Uh, so they said, we will expedite the transition of China's growth model to one of green development and promote both high quality economic growth and high standard environmental protection. Um, but this is the kicker. Uh, just one little paragraph, two lines. China also refrained from introducing a ban on building new coal-fired plants and did not set a target for curbing coal power plants capacity for the next five years. And, but climate change is so urgent that we have to stop tourists from coming this country so that we can uh, cut our carbon footprint which is a tiny fraction of of what China puts into the atmosphere so yeah there goes a little bit of a conundrum or um, I would rather say uh, double standards uh, so now I'd like to uh, turn to uh, what Margot has to say. So just have a look at uh, at this uh, graph from her. Uh, and this shows basically that the uh, the methane these are, these are global meth methane emissions, which she's been following kind of every day for. Uh, almost a couple of years now and um, what you can see from the graph is that the methane emissions in February of this year have already exceeded the peak of emissions um, at their highest point in 2019. So let's just hear what Margot has to say. So here's the data for the 6th and averages out to 1889.75 parts per billion. And so that gives us an increase this week of 4.5 parts per billion. So here we are on our chart where it's going up. So it's just under, it's just shy of 19, 1890 by 0.25 parts per billion. And it's been going up for the last three weeks. And we can see that we're, we're really in no man's land. Now this time last year, we were, <coughs> we were, um, this time last year we were 6.75 parts per billion lower but um, <clears throat> also what we're seeing is um, see last year it, it shot up in February and then and then it started going down a little bit in March and and then it went back up and then in April it went started going back down until about June July and then it started on its trek back up during the normal 
warming season for methane in the summertime in the northern hemisphere and the last time um, <coughs> now where we are right now is about the same as the end of July last year on the rise so we're already at that level starting out yeah, so those are global uh, methane emissions uh, that have gone up steeply. So let's just turn our uh, attention uh, to the Arctic. And there's this article which just came out about a week or so ago. And uh, here, uh, I'll just let Margot briefly tell you what's in it. Well, this is just quick. <clears throat> this, um, this is an article about this new paper that just came out this week. Now this article is from phys.org and this was March the 2nd and the title says Testing Waters of East Siberian Arctic Ocean suggests origin of elevated methane is reservoir located in Latev Sea. Now we've known this, but this is more research that has, it was done in 2014, but it's just now been analyzed and, and it's being published in proceedings in the National Academy of Sciences. So it takes them a while to get everything analyzed and so the bottom line is and so here's the article I'll leave it I'll leave a link below and um, if you want to read the actual paper you can go right here there's the link here's the paper and um, it's it was received for review on September 19th of 2020 it was approved on January 19th, 2021, and it's set for publication March, March, um, 2021, March 8th or 9th or something like that. So, <clears throat> anyway, it's, a uh, yeah, March 9th, 2021, and so it's, but it's already online. Here, so here's the article, and here's the figures and info and metrics. You can download the PDF file, and um, the, the there was one figure that was quite interesting. These all these dots are the research areas where they tested they tested methane. They took methane samples in the water. And the area is in, the, in here's the Arctic, and this is Greenland, Canada. Here's Russia over here. This is the New Siberian Islands. This is the Latev Sea. So it's primarily <coughs> just in this portion of the Latev Sea that they they tested. I think there were 23. 23 stations where they tested and this is the the main picture <coughs> so I just thought I'd share that uh, so as Marco says uh, the we can see the emissions coming out of the Laptev Sea that they referred to in the article uh, but that's nothing compared with what's coming off uh, Komsomolets Island um, in the Russian Arctic, uh, slightly to the west. Uh, so let's just have a quick look.
So we live in a funny world where I saw an article, I think, today uh, saying that they've calculated the number of tonnes or whatever of CO2 in the atmosphere in the last year and it's gone down. And yet if you look at the data from Hawaii, uh, the actual amount of CO2 uh, concentrations in the atmosphere have, have gone up. Uh, so that's an indication that um, greenhouse gases are accumulating uh, despite everything, uh, despite pandemics and despite all their plans for the Great Reset, etc. And then we have um, little old New Zealand has got to cut off, shut its economy down, um, and keep tourists away. Uh, sacrifice its uh, one of its main uh, economic earners, while the Chinese economy just keeps heating up, um, and they uh, continue with coal fire. Uh, electrical generation. So you just get so many uh, contradictions. And I just want to allude to something. I don't think I'm really allowed to talk about this. Um, I saw an interview with uh, a prominent Belgian vaccinologist who's worked with uh, uh, the Gateses and, and so forth. And he was putting out a really dire report. He was saying um, that basically what's been happening has led to a situation where uh, through the vaccines, the, va the vaccines are, are uh, suboptimal and that's leading to a situation where uh, people's immunity is being basically brought down to zero uh, while we're in the midst of a pandemic and he said the consequences are, uh, are going to be disastrous. So that's from an insider in the industry. Uh, so I'll leave the details of this uh, in the description box below. Okay, that's probably enough for me. Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.